Welcome back to another episode on Behold Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a look at one of my favorite games to come out during the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube days, but never made it out past, really, the sixth generation of gaming with Stormfront Studios. Looking back, one of my favorite games that I still play from time to time was Forgotten Realms Demon Stone. Cashing in on the craze from their hit games with Lord of the Rings, Stormfront Studios made a name for themselves in the fantasy action genre from 2000 to 2008. Stormfront Studios was based as an American game developer in San Rafael, California, and had success in the PC and console space with games like Neverwinter Nights, Tony La Russa Baseball, and many others. Showing their diversity, many companies worked alongside like Electronic Arts, Microsoft, Sony, Atari, to even Ubisoft. Later on, showing their desire to branch out even more, Stormfront was tasked to develop the game The Lord of the Rings The Two Towers that quickly became one of the top selling action genres from 2002 and 2003, especially with licensed movie games to game adaptations that were not really well represented, Stormfront proved that good games can also be done the right way with the right license and timing. Presenting quality over substance, many felt in 2004 came one of the best games released with Forgotten Realms Demon Stone, taking the Dungeons and Dragons license. The game went on to be nominated for multiple gaming awards in its wake. Soon it looked as if Stormfront could do nothing wrong with film licenses and other licenses and took on the spider Man Chronicles and Aragon until their untimely end. As each project grew, so did financial concerns with a developer in need of a publisher at all times. With the end of Sierra and parent company Vivendi merging with Activision Blizzard, the closure hurt Stormfront Studios as they both were intertwined with developer and publishing deals. With no publisher meant no games. No games means no financial gain and of course closure. This was also the case in 2008 as the whole world faced the market crash in housing stocks to dot com era sizzling out. Of course this was not something anyone looked for but with all these perfect storms occurring at the same time there's no chance Stormfront could find a partner and publisher and pretty much ended their foray in the video games industry after 20 plus years of service. Leaving in their long history of gaming were numerous major awards and nominations from the Academy Awards of Interactive Arts and Sciences, G4 Television, BAFTA, the IGDA or Game Developers Choice, to many other magazine and website credit and awarenesses. Although I truly only played three other titles heavily during my time in gaming with Neverwinter Nights, Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, and my favorite, Forgotten Realms, Demon Stone, I soon knew Stormfront Studios' quality of games and also felt that they were a team that would put out the utmost respectable software in gaming. It is a shame that they never truly experienced the sixth generation properly as I wish to see what they could have done more with the Xbox 360 and beyond. If anything else, please check out Demon Stone as that was a game of legend for me in the hack and slash adventure RPG combo. That's it for me on this look at Stormfront Studios rise and fall to what perfect storms do. They destroy or in this case take a wonderful developer way too early before their time. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Be whole out and great. Take us out of here, and I will see you all next upload. Any idea what all that was? <sighs> Those were outsiders, creatures from other planes of existence. The female was Githyanki, the male Slod. Both races destroy everything in their paths. We're near Cedarleaf. It's a wood elf village. We have to make sure they're safe. I thought she hated wood elves. Damn.